Hey art nerds! So today we're going to try something a little bit different from what we've done on this channel, but not entirely new to me. We are going to carve mini Honko inspired stamps using erasers. And we are also going to try using these cuticle trimming tools that were recommended on TikTok, as well as linoleum cutting tools that I happen to have from way back in undergrad. Now, if you know me, you know I love many things. I want to show you guys some of the prints that I made when I was in undergrad, as well as some of the matchbox size Mokuhan prints we've collected over the past year. When I was in undergrad, I was a hypermedia major, but I spent a lot of time in the printmaking lab and I took a lot of printmaking classes from linoleum to intaglio to screen printing to even more eco and health friendly printmaking techniques. Unfortunately, when I went to graduate school and I brought Bowie with me, I had them locked in a closet in a spare bedroom and that little raptor learned how to open not one doorknob, but two doorknobs. He knocked them down from the shelf that most of my prints were on. I would say hundreds of prints, wood block, linoleum, intaglio, most of my screen prints, and he peed all over all of them. He ruined most of my prints. I was furious. Unfortunately, that means I can't share those with you guys. Those are lost to the sands of time. I didn't really own a scanner at that point in time. I was working with these really big screen prints. A lot of that is sadly just gone. And it kind of breaks my heart because what is left are some kind of mediocre examples of what I've done in printmaking. And what's lost is a huge chunk of my developmental artist's life. And that is definitely frustrating. But at least I have a few examples. I don't actually have any woodblock or linoleum examples and the eraser carving is the most similar to that. What I have is a screen print. This is a two color screen print with um, a more or a dot effect. I have some intaglio. It might be copper plate, it might be zinc plate, I don't quite remember. So I have a couple of intaglio prints and I have kind of a rejected screen print from when I was doing my senior project. So Bowie really did not leave me with a whole lot to show you and it's pretty disappointing. If I kept digging, if I asked around to friends and family, if I contacted old classmates, I might be able to get a hold of some of my other works. But as it stands today, I don't really have a lot to show for three years of constantly taking printmaking classes and basically living in the printmaking lab after all my classes were over. Cats. Man, you can just do your best and they will still thwart you. So I wish I had more to show. I wish I had some of my linoleum prints. I had some really cool ones that I'd done. Um, I used to do, I had these like tiny business card size intaglio prints that I made as uh, business cards and I did an edition of 100 of them. If you guys were ever curious why I signed my original art on the back, it comes from my time spent printmaking. This was my first real experience with making commercial art and I wanted to keep some of that even as I moved into comics more fully. Uh, <laughs> if you've ever wondered where the tiny people stuff comes from, this was actually a self-portrait from years ago, uh, kind of depicting the relationship I had with my family at the time. I don't really want to get super into it, but it was a more personal piece. And then I did some watercolor op of, uh, on top of that. And you guys can really see how rudimentary my watercolor was at the time. I was also using very much student grade watercolors. I believe these were Reeves and they did not hold up very well to the test of time. So that's another reason why I really try to encourage you to buy the best watercolors you can, and it's another reason why I review a lot of student grade watercolors is to help you guys find ones that will work a little bit better than what I was working with at the time. So this tiny, tiny little sample, and look, even this covered in cat hair, some dubious spots on it, and this was in a frame. He busted it out of the frame. He was so upset with me. <sighs> Good thing he's doing so much better now. He's on kitty cat anxiety meds, and that seems to have made a difference, but 
Anyway, I wanted to show you guys just some of my printmaking. I really wish I had found some of my woodblock prints and some of my linoleum prints because those are closer to what we're going to be doing today. But it just kind of gives you guys an idea. Um, I'd love to pick up block printing, either a linoleum, rubber block, or wood, probably linoleum and rubber block given the condition of my hand at this point. Um, unfortunately for me, it's just another time consuming thing that I don't quite have time to do yet. And that's why the eraser blocks are just so appealing. They're so small, they're so minute, and they're very quick to do. And that makes it a lot more accessible to people with limited space, limited resources, who may not. So we're not going to be using a, a roller to roll ink onto our stamps. We're not going to be using anything that requires a lot of space. We're not going to be using a press. So this is actually so much easier and so much immediate more immediate than the printmaking techniques that I used when I was an undergrad. So this makes it a lot more accessible than the traditional printmaking techniques that you guys see here. So these are teeny tiny woodblock prints that we ordered from David Bull from Mokuhan and he has a YouTube channel. You guys can check him out. He talks a lot about woodblock prints. And what drew us to these, we have some of his other ones. In fact, I think Joseph ordered some of the video game. Oh, these are fans, so they're upside down. Some of the video game woodblock prints that he's done in collaboration with another artist. But what really draws me to these is these are woodblocks. They were carved out of a block of wood. So all of these super fine lines, teeny tiny details. These were all hand carved out of a block of wood. And having done wood block carving myself, wood can be temperamental. And then all of these layers of color, whether it's the purple, the lighter blue, or the darker blue, were either carved from that block, so reductively, or carved on separate blocks. And you could actually do that technique with the erasers that we're going to be taking a look at today. I don't think, in fact, I know, it's very challenging to get these kind of fine lines. You can do them in reverse and leave these kind of very fine lines. The dragons even have a little bit of embossing on them that the camera, it might pick it up as a faint gray line. And then there's this beautiful metallic ombre effect. And these are meant to be laid out in a series. I wanna, even though my hands are clean, I wanna avoid touching them as much as I can because our hand, I'm not wearing gloves, our hands have oils in them that are uh, fairly detrimental to papers and inks. Even high quality pigments and papers eventually will degrade the more you handle them. So these are very similar in spirit to the eraser prints we're going to be doing in that they are very small. You have to think very carefully about space. You could line several erasers up and do kind of, um, oh gee, there's five of those. I don't know what kind of tick that would be. A diptych is two, a triptych is three. Y'all let me know down in the comments what five would be. So with the teeny tiny faces, those are extremely impressive. And then the details on the clothing as well. And what my goal for this is, is to get them all framed in one large frame with mat around them and display them in our front entryway. And it's basically a full blown woodblock art gallery, art print gallery, all in one place. And they weren't horrifically expensive, which you would think they would be because they are so small and working at this size, people think working small is easier. <laughs> working in miniature is really, really difficult. It's less forgiving when it comes to mistakes and accidents and your hands slipping. And there's still a lot of color and a lot of detail, even though these have been somewhat simplified. And we've been storing them in little plastic bags just to try to keep them safe and protected until we can get them framed. And I actually have two more envelopes from Mokuhan that I need to open. But 
this was my Christmas present this year. All these. Love, love the tiny foods. I love the detail on the tiny foods. I love the way they did the gingham. I love the way they rendered the persimmon. The fish is just gorgeous. I'm not going to be showing you how to do these. You can head on over to David's YouTube channel though. There's loads of live streams, lots of information, and he runs a shop. I, my brain wants to say it's in Tokyo, but I don't actually remember off the top of my head. And then this is a reproduction of different Kabuki actors. Aren't these cool? They're so cool. All these colors, all this detail, at like a dollhouse size. And then all these little prints are just so crisp. And there's something really beautiful and satisfying about the limited color and the amount of cartooning and how delicately the line work was done. And whenever I look at things like this, it really makes me miss printmaking and having access to a community of fellow printmakers in person that I could collaborate with and work with. And it really makes me mourn what Bowie ruined. Oh well, he's just a cat and these are just temporary ephemeral things. These are the materials for the most part that I am going to use. I may also go grab my lino cutting tools, but using these small cuticle trimmers was recommended by a couple of different eraser stamp carvers on TikTok, and it just seemed to make a lot of sense. So I'm definitely going to be trying to work with these primarily. And you can find these, supposedly you can find these at Dollar Tree. I checked at Five Below, I could not find them anywhere. So I will link where I got everything, but most of these things are pretty easy to find. Also, the Mr. Pin erasers were recommended for carving, but these pink pearl erasers are what I see a lot of people using. I wanted to use these to also stamp my art prints, kind of like a Honko stamp. So I wanted to get a pigment ink and I got the Skinico Versafine or Sukiniko. How do I know it's Skinico or <laughs> I'm going to make y'all mad. I'm sorry. I've heard, okay, so uh, people who have never read manga and don't watch anime definitely pronounce it as Tsuki Niko uh, on their craft channels, but if you watch anime, you, you want to call it Skiniko. so we'll see, or Skineko. Anyway, uh, this is a pigment ink. When they said small, I did not realize they meant micro. So I am actually waiting for my larger pigment ink stamp pad to arrive and it is supposed to arrive today. So hopefully I'll have this. I am also working on this project because we are going to present it to Art Squad Advanced on Tuesday and today is Wednesday. So I've got about a week to do this, which isn't really a problem because as you guys know, I have somewhat of a back, uh, background in printmaking. So um, what I am going to do today, what I would have liked to have done is I would have actually liked to 
me open these. Um, dip my erasers in the ink to get a red ground so I could see what I'm doing and where I'm carving a little more easily. I am probably going to draw my designs directly on the eraser, although there are a lot of different transfer methods you can do. I want to keep it kind of simple. And this isn't really intended as like a how-to. Uh, it's more like an I tried. But I do have a background in both eraser block carving. So um, right when I was in undergrad, more uh, like Speedball started selling the pink and the white vinyl. Uh, it was like a faux lino. And it's much easier to cut than traditional lino. So I played around with that. I've also done wood, wood block carving. I have done linoleum carving. We did cardboard printing last year, and that was kind of cool. I've never done that. I think it's called a collier graph. Um, I used to do a lot of intaglio. I did copper point and etching, and I also did screen printing. And uh, hopefully you guys saw me show you guys a bunch of different examples of the kind of printmaking that I used to do back in the day. Also did some rubber block printing for uh, the friendly Book of Monsters. Uh, so the red covered artist edition, myself and Electric Abyss hand printed all those covers using a rubber block that I carved. So it's been a little while, but I have done it before and I am really excited to be doing it with you guys today. So I love tiny little things like you guys can't tell from my comic. And I probably also showed you guys the Mokohan wood block prints that we've been collecting. It's from their Matchbox series. So they are teeny tiny little micro prints. So you should not at all be surprised that I love this kind of stuff. And when I saw people carving on erasers, I was like, duh, why have I not been doing that? And kind of the holdup for me was the tools. I do have lino, lino cutting tools, but they're kind of big. So uh, when somebody mentioned using one of these cuticle trimmers, that made a lot of sense to me. So hopefully we can produce some cute stamps. Hopefully I can produce a signed stamp so that I can stamp my new art prints. I'm going to stamp and sign them. Oh my goodness, this is very wrapped. So this is going to be like a soft white vinyl. And then this is going to be, I, I don't like pink pearl erasers as erasers. So maybe, maybe I'll finally have a use for them that makes me happy. And we're going to go ahead. We could do it a lot of different ways. We could make a smaller stamp up here at the top. We could also carve the entire side uh sorry these are very wrapped okay we could carve the entire side we could even if we were really clever about it get a double-sided stamp going on so you have some options so i'm gonna do a little demo for you guys just using what i already have on hand which would be the versafine in crimson red as you guys can see it's a little small i could cut it in half i could make it work but i wanted something about this size or about this size for my stamps um, partially because I have arthritis and carving something that is too tiny would not be good for the arthritis so while I'm waiting on Amazon to deliver my larger stamp pad I can go ahead and open this one and this is Archival Instant Dry Stamp, uh, Instant Dry Pigment Ink. Oil based, water resistant, long lasting, and cleans up easily. Well, if it is water resistant, I don't see, and it's going to be even smaller. So I want to demonstrate kind of the principle I'm talking about. See how, ooh, that, man, too bad. This is a little too small for what we want. So the pad just wants to come out. So I'm going to let this dry. And then we'll do a little demo carve, I guess, on the side. So you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. I've been drawing for about five minutes. As it is, it will never dry. You guys can see how it's shiny. And uh, I found out for myself. So we're going to need to actually blot this on. Fortunately, I have some scrap paper handy. Because we want it to still have at least some of the color. So you can see the white 
and I'm going to go ahead. This is going to bother me, but I'm going to go ahead and open our Ivon, not to be mistaken with Avon, our Ivon Q. Let's see. Hold it still. Ooh, that is good for those really little lines getting going. But I think in order to really move material, I am going to have to go dig out my Lino set. But I don't think that's mandatory. Like if you're doing this at home or if you're doing this with a class and this can hurt, it can cut if you really get yourself, but the Lino, Lino tools can re <laughs> I've given myself some scars, I'm sure, from cutting Lino blocks and it's slipping and skidding on the linoleum, to be fair. I don't think it's gonna skid on the rubber and cutting me just a little bitty bit. So this should actually work pretty well. Um, you may also want to have an X-Acto blade handy. Um, and that should be a pretty good start to it. All right, I hope these sized correctly. So I, <laughs> maybe, maybe we will find out. They might be a little big. I may have to print them again. But basically, I have two versions of my Natto Soup logo. I have taken them into Photoshop, scaled them to fit my erasers, and then flipped them. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut them out. We're going to apply graphite to the back. I would recommend a softer graphite, like a B or a softer. And we are going to then trace over them using a mechanical pencil to hopefully transfer the design to our erasers. This works for linoleum. I have never tried it on an eraser before. All right, so now that we have them assembled, we just need to go over them with a pencil and trace the outline. You can also make changes if you want to. If you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Like you can, we're gonna have to redraw this anyway. And I would also recommend having a Sharpie, like a fine point Sharpie handy to finalize the designs. So for the most part, we have two ways of thinking about doing our stamps. And by the way, I should have mentioned this earlier, any image you want to stamp, you should transfer it in reverse because we are going to stamp it down like this and that way it will read the correct way. This is particularly important for numbers and letters, but if you have a logo, it's also probably particularly important for your logo. That's why I reversed this. Um, so we have two ways of thinking about our stamps. We can do positive stamps where we leave just the main event and we remove everything else. Or we can do negative stamps where we carve into uh, the thing and leave everything else. So I want to do one of each. I am going to do a negative stamp with this one. So I'm going to carve in the natto soup. And I'm going to do a positive stamp with this one. I'm going to carve out everything but the natto soup. And at this small size, that is probably going to be a challenge. The reason I decided to do it that way is if I had to carve everything out around this, I worry that the bevels will cause a problem. So that is something to consider when selecting erasers. But you could take an X-Acto blade and just cut off these bevels so that you have just kind of a little chunk of eraser.
So while there are a lot of different ways to get an image onto your eraser for carving, you can also just go straight in. Just keep in mind that it needs to work as a flipped image. So this is the one that we kind of tested the little stamp pad out on and I've carved off all that red. Could have left it, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to do a very simple little two mushroom design. And I think I want this to be um, positive. So the mushrooms are going to be printed in red, which means that we have to carve everything else out. So I went ahead and sketched it. And one of the nice things too is you can just keep adjusting the design. You can add elements, you can remove elements, whatever works if you want to make some of it positive and some of it negative. Like let's say we want the bases to be mostly white. We would do an outline like this and then maybe we would do some carved in little freckles and I have to remind myself to leave them large enough that I can actually carve it because this is this is pretty tiny not as tiny as some people go but I'm used to doing um, like eight and a half by eleven five by seven like that side size range I only did really small stuff with intaglio and screen printing so takes a little getting used to and then once you have a design that you're pretty happy with just sketched out on your eraser you can go ahead and finalize it a fine point sharpie would be a little bit better than this micron but I don't have one so I'm going to use what I have and I'm blacking in the areas that I want to carve out and I'm also keeping these pretty simple because it's been a few years since I've done any kind of printmaking and I would like for it to turn out well, if possible. You know how it is whenever it's the first time back from not doing something for a long time. Might not turn out so great. Sometimes you have to practice again to get at it. So even if it's not perfect, I'm good with that. Wanted to get some practice in before we did this. For the class, I want to get my mistakes out on y'all. But I also thought it would be fun to share this with you guys. Because this used to be a part of who I was. And I still would like to get back into printmaking. So maybe in the future it'll be part of who I am again. But at least this, I've been meaning to do a Honko stamp to sign my stuff. Especially since my arthritis is getting worse, I kind of want to save my hand for drawing base and painting. And this is still me. This is still something I did. This is still something I will have hand carved. So hopefully other people will appreciate the stamps as much as I do. I love when people use a stamp to sign their art. I like especially a carved stamp that they made. It's so cool. And then after I so I'm blacking this in so I know where to carve and I can see areas that I've missed. And once my stamp pad comes in, you know, I may need to do some test runs too. That's the beautiful thing about these kind of mini stamps is it's very, very easy to test and see how well they work and to see what you need to fix. You can also do reductive printmaking with this where we might start with a blank stamp and that becomes our background and then we carve away at it and create an image by removing layers, kind of like you might do with a woodblock print depending on how big of an addition you want to do. This is going to be my first time carving on these particular materials. These are actually a little softer than the 
not rubber, they're really like a plastic kind of blocks you can find that are meant for stamp carving. And these are a little more grainy. So I have some thoughts about how I want to pursue this, but I am not 100% sure. So I think, so one thing I probably should do is I probably should, and I'm hesitant about this because I don't know how I feel feel about letting a class of teenagers do this so we may have to find another method but what I used to do with linoleum was just kind of score the outline and I'm gonna have to move my camera but I wanted y'all to be close enough to see um, and just work my way around the outline before carving away with our little carving tool and what that does is it basically creates a starting point let me start up here and a stopping point where your rubber is pre-cut and I'm having trouble removing this little sliver and I don't want to do further damage but it kind of creates an outline especially because these things are not very sharp at all which I mean, that's good for people not cutting themselves, but it's not super... Dull tools are often more dangerous than sharp tools. I'm also going to go dig out my Lino tools and move the camera a little bit, and we can work to time lapse. Let's take a little walk through memory lane. I dug out my old Lino cutting tools. So I basically had two knives or two cutting tools. One of them... So these are some of the tips one of them my favorite one actually has a secret compartment of tips and you can actually sharpen them i have never done that you can also buy replacement tips and what i'm looking for maybe this this is like uh my camera's probably not gonna love this Let's see if i can do anything about it super tiny a lot like the little nail cutter right or the cuticle trimmer Put these back also comes with a small knife and I like that they screw into the handle and I found the handle to be really ergonomic this was another one not as ergonomic and you can't unscrew it and then you untwist the collar it loosens it up it's been a while Let's see, not loose enough apparently. There we go. And then you tighten it back up like that. Man, it brings back memories.
This is not a project if you hate making mess, or maybe I should say this is a project to do in your garage or outside if you hate making a mess. Like I, I, I kind of regret my life choices. Uh, also, it was me being lazy by going with my existing logo instead of uh, creating something brand new paying the price for that small typography not not easy to do uh, I'm waiting for my stamper to come in to test the stamp and see if there's any areas that I need to continue to work down or continue to remove um, it was easier using this actual lino tool than it was using this little guy here I do still I'm a stubborn one I do want to try this little guy here. Also, all these little tight turns, really hard to do at this size, especially if you have arthritis. Um, so maybe larger iconography would be a better idea. So I do want to test out both, like I said. I'm going to switch over and try to do the mushroom using the little cuticle trimmer. All right, so this is probably not the brand that the person I saw on TikTok is using. I don't know. They, it's, it's one of those little cuticle trimmers. They like the ones from Dollar Tree. Couldn't find them at Dollar Tree. So I ordered them on Amazon. Those are terrible. Those are not going to get the job done. So I guess I am back to my carving tool. I find the pink eraser is a little too gritty and it can be really prone to tearing, especially with small fussy cut imagery like this. The mushrooms, which were a little bit looser and I could really get in there, this was much faster and it was a lot easier on my hands. These are both just too small, especially this one, too small for me for like typography, that sort of thing especially with arthritis. So now I'm gonna try to do these and probably, probably feel like I'm losing my mind.
Okay, so these Mr. Pin erasers are very, very soft to carve, which if they were bigger, I mean, they're tiny, y'all. If they were bigger, that might be a delight. They're a lot easier to carve than the pink pearls, which are e much easier to carve than carve like uh, plastic carving blocks and much, much easier to carve than linoleum. Uh, these are a little too soft, though. So for something this size, getting any kind of fidelity is definitely kind of challenging. I have one more that I've prepared. So, wow, it makes such a mess and it is apparent that it's time to change the, the Teflon top on my desk. Um, I have one more to carve, but I actually want to try doing, I'm going to blow through all these erasers just doing stamps while I figure that out. But you know, it's cheap enough that I could actually afford to do that. So it is not the biggest problem. I think I'm just going to do an, a backwards N for natto soup. Um, or maybe a B and an H, but I gotta do that backwards. And you know, you know, little, little smidgen of dysgraphia going on here just takes me a little bit longer to reverse things in my mind. Um, but basically doing something larger, ideally with fewer curves, just seems like it works a little bit better. So for at least for me, I mean, I've seen people do some gorgeous things with some of these, uh, the pink pearls, and they make it look so easy. And isn't that the beautiful thing about art is often when it's done well, it looks easy. And like, let's be blunt, it's easy to dismiss the skill, talent, effort, dedication it takes to be able to do something like that because you look at it and you're like, oh, I could do that. They make it look so easy. And then you try to do it yourself and it is very difficult, but you know, Sometimes those very difficult things are worth pursuing and worth honing, sometimes just for the value of being able to do those things. Drawing is not, for many people, an easy skill to pick up. But I would argue, as someone who teaches drawing, and as someone who struggled to learn how to draw myself and is still working on improving my art, that it is well worth the price of admission and well worth the time, and it's something worth figuring out how to do and falling in love with it in and of itself. Okay, so this little stamp here is kind of the opposite of what I meant to do. I meant to just leave the positive instead of doing a negative stamp, but in a way it kind of works out. So you can see two different methods for using, you could just use your stamp ink for this. Uh, mine hasn't come in yet. So I sharpied out the areas originally. These were gonna be the areas that I was going to carve, kind of like we did with the pink pearl, but I distracted myself for both of these stamps. And it's actually the opposite now. It is the areas that, um, kind of like a negative. So the same thing that I did with the pink pearl, which is not what I intended. So for this last one, I'm actually just going to leave the black and carve away the white, which is kind of the opposite of what you would expect, but it becomes the area that you're going to actually print. All right, look what came in. It is my bigger, and this should be pigment based as well, my bigger stamp pad. This should work 
just fine with these larger stamps. I do love this color though. The crimson red is such a pretty, pretty red. But this needed a bigger pad for these. So I am going to carve this stamp and then we can do some tests and see how these actually stamp. This larger one was much quicker and easier to carve, but I am worried that I haven't quite taken away enough material for it to stamp well. So I'm just trying to kind of remove some of the, not quite excess, but make sure that it's not going to print. Now we are going to do tests. We're not done quite yet, but you know, you don't want to have to make a bunch of corrections. You want to be mostly on the right track, right? I used to have a tool and I don't think, I, I don't know. It was kind of like a, a shallow bottomed U. Mm, no, I don't, I don't know where it went. I used to have a lot more tools than this. And that used to be great for like cleaning up and flattening out, you know, these kind of gouges don't have that anymore so we're just gonna we're just gonna do without it so I'm gonna clean this mess up because it ended up being really messy it is just eraser carvings but still and I, I need to change out the Teflon this is shameful and I'm not gonna do that tonight but we can start doing some test stamps so I have my ink I have my stamps I have my scrap paper I think we can finally try some of these out and hopefully none of the marker will transfer over to the stamp pad. So we will start with our little mushrooms. All right, pretty decent. I did actually get some transfer from the ink that may wear off eventually. This looks like an egg, not like a little mushroom. So I may want to carve just a smidgen of a stem in there. Could even do that right now. See, that's the nice, the really nice thing about these little mini stamps is they are at least very immediate. You can make really quick changes. I'm just trying, this doesn't really, wow, I'm just getting, these stupid eraser shavings all over everything. Um, they don't want to cut as cleanly as you would hope. Okay, I didn't do good pressure, but I do think adding the little line to the bottom of the mushroom helps. Just do a little bit more. I mean, they keep picking up more of their eraser bits. Okay. I, I wonder how long we're going to have the black ink. I may have to figure out a way to clean that out. Because some of these are like really, really on there. As you can see, it actually does leave some on. And it definitely leaves some on the paper. It's like, especially because this is soft. You see it picks up all those lines I didn't quite knock down so I'm gonna have to go back and clean those up I wish I could have gotten a tighter carve on the H because and I can clean that area up around the B because it just gets kind of noisy wasn't really able it kind of started to tear and that's something I also noticed about these is they will kind of shred and tear as you're cutting them natto soup turned out Honestly, surprisingly decent. I thought it was going to be unreadable mess. 
And it's not great, but it's better than I thought. Let's try these little mushrooms. Can at least apply good pressure. All right, okay, that one's pretty cute. That one's pretty good. Even though it is the reverse of what I wanted, I make kind of another uh, the way I want it to turn out. So I'm actually happy with that one. I'm also leaving little eraser schmutz on my ink pad, which I don't like that, but. And then our final natto soup. See, this one is less clean. So I'm kind of feeling like the pink pearl allows for a little bit better fidelity. It's not great. And doing anything with type or anything with um, really tight tolerances, it can kind of shred and tear, at least with the tools that I currently have. Um, the little mushrooms turned out surprisingly good and it is easier if you just leave the background. So if you do negative printing where the image shows up in the negative space, then if you're doing positive printing, because you guys can see there's a lot that needs to just be like cleaned up. And while that's not, you know, the, the hardest thing, with these kind of stamps too, be, unless you have like a back or like a little wooden or even a chipboard back to them, they're going to depress down when you press on the areas that are, you know, have less material to them. So it gets to a point where you've kind of shaved it too thin and it's still not going to do what you want it to do until unless you put some support to it. That's why some linoleum blocks will have a wood back to them. All right, let's test this one again. You see, I pushed down on the sides just trying to get some leverage and it re-dipped in the ink. So got to remember to just do the center and that actually prints a little bit better. That was kind of fun. It was surprisingly messy and it did not go the way I really thought it was going to. It was actually a lot harder than I expected. Not that actually carving the, the erasers was the challenging part, but rather getting fidelity at this size on this material is the challenging part. This last stamp that I did in time lapse with y'all ended up turning out the best because I took what I'd learned from doing all of these different designs and kind of applied it to this one. I also found that U, well, it's really that flat U shape uh, that I was telling you guys about. It was in the handle of this carving tool and I was able to just kind of shave it down just a little bit. You really don't have to take too much off of it so that it mostly has its structural stability and it's just carved away enough that you can make your stamp. Let's see if there's still some ink on it. Nah. So I, <laughs> I, I still want to, I still want to do this for Art Squad on Tuesday. 
but now I have the challenge of figuring out what to do. I'm hoping the ones that my co-teacher ordered are better quality than these because these theoretically they should do the job but it really didn't do the job very well. Um, it might be just good enough. I will bring my carving tools as well but I only have two handles so and I they do sell less expensive little plastic holders for these. Unfortunately, while these kind of look like my dip pen holders, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust my dip pen holders to hold the blades, especially if I was letting a student borrow it. So we may just have to be very patient and take our time and work with the materials that we have, which is a lesson that's always really difficult for me to be able to accept. They're great about it. I'm the one who struggles. I think when signing my art prints, this is the stamp I'm going to use, the two little mushrooms, and just sign my name next to it. It ended up a little bit bigger than I kind of envisioned. I was kind of envisioning a more horizontal stamp, but I wanted to give myself, the bigger you can work on this, it seems like the better. Also, you really, especially for these, using just the thinnest blade and taking just the littlest amount, seems to really work the best. So you don't really need to gouge in there like I was doing for some of these stamps. Um, you can kind of just get away with lightly doing it. Also, I found that even though this is supposed to be a pigment-based ink, I thought it was at least, um, I know the Versafine is definitely a pigment-based ink. Amazon is not always great at bringing you what you're looking for when you look up pigment-based stamp ink. So um, it is an archival ink though. Um, I was not expecting it to reactivate the permanent marker. Uh, I may have to use rubbing alcohol to try and clean those stamps off. So if you're following along at home, honestly, just straight up pencil lead seemed to work. I ended up going at it with a uh, permanent marker because one, when I was doing linoleum printing, you could get away with that. In fact, we would kind of solidify our illustrations that way. And the oil-based ink that we used didn't cause a problem. But also I wanted to be able to see what I was doing and I was concerned that if I was handling these a lot, I would smear the graphite to the point where I couldn't see it anymore. But that ended up not really being a problem. So I was probably just worrying for nothing. So here is one of my new art prints. It's a proof of one of my new art prints. I'm actually waiting for the revised proofs to come in, but what are what better use for proof, especially a mushroom themed proof, than to test out the new stamp. Pat, maybe we'll do it over here. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. I also like how it actually shows up on the print itself. That's one of the reasons I wanted to go with the pigment ink is I felt like it would be less likely to get lost on something like this. Also, with pigment inks, they're going to be permanent once they've dried. So they should be able to mark even on something that has a little bit of a printed surface. And then I would just sign my name right next to it. But I'm pretty happy about that. So I hope I've given you guys some inspiration for a new project to try. There are a bunch of TikToks and YouTube channels that talk about carving eraser stamps, and they may have some better tips and tricks than what I was able to share with you guys here. So I highly recommend you continue to study and research if this seems like something you want to try out. But don't be afraid to just drop, dive right in. The materials are fairly inexpensive, and the best way to learn how to do something is by trying it, seeing where you're struggling, and then learning from there. So I hope you guys found this helpful, useful, and inspiring. If you like my art, you can support it at the Natto Shop at nattosoup.com slash shop. You might even see some of these cute little mushroom stamps on my brand new art print. So you might want to check those out. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope to see you guys again soon with another art supply review, tutorial, or artist vlog. Bye!